There we go. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that lovely introduction, Alan. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about scoping a project, which is um, a big part of any project, um, often not very well done at the beginning. So as a project manager, here you are, here's a budget to manage and here's a timeline to manage, but actually no one's quite sure where they're aiming at. Um, so to me, the starting point has got to be how you scope it out at the beginning. So the first thing to think about is, is what's the overall strategy and what systems are we looking at? So in a big business, it might be a finance system, it might be a marketing system, it might be an HR system, but what's the overall business strategy that we're trying to tie it into? Where is that business or that charity or that organization going? Um, and therefore, what is it they need to be looking at and developing? Because it could be anything. Um, having recently talked to a potential client about their IT system, they'd bought a new system, they'd put it in three locations, but it wasn't working very well. They wanted help in getting that finished and putting it in three other locations. And then someone on the board going, but how does this tie into our IT strategy? Which of course didn't really exist. So they've stopped, despite the fact they've now bought a system, paid for it and aren't using it. Um, which is, uh, as anyone will tell you, doesn't take an accountant to figure out that's a waste of money. Um, so think about what the strategy is uh, and what the systems are. Culture and change. Uh, I think one uh, aspect of lots of IT based projects is they're very much concentrated on what that process is, what the systems are, and not the people in the business and what you're trying to do to the culture or what might change as a result. And um, that you have to manage that change, uh, strong communications throughout the business and to all the stakeholders. Uh, and that's a lot wider than just the two or three people in the IT team that are responsible for that piece of kit and the two or three managers in that finance department, say, who are um, running it. Uh, I worked with a client a few years ago. They bought a new finance system. Then the finance director had left. It sat there for a year before it got picked up and managing partner said, we've got to get this sorted. And the old system was literally a black box in the corner of the accounts department and three people used it. And they wanted to change this so that all the end users were generating all their own sales invoices, which was a much better thing for the business to do. But that was a huge cultural change, a very small piece of IT training, but a very big bit of cultural shift um, in the organization. So we had to think about the comms and how we would do that and training the people up to want to do something in a very different way. Um, and then to think about the operations, which areas of the business are you looking at? Uh, I work mostly with finance-based systems, but in a property system, in a property company, that's going to talk to a property management system and or an asset management system. Uh, in a consultancy that's selling services, it's probably going to talk to a time management system and an expenses system. Um, it's probably going to talk to a customer relationships management system. If they're all different, we need to think about the impact on those and how they're all going to work together. Um, the people side and, if necessary, the IT side and bolting those bits of kit together, which is something a lot of IT people will tell you is, is possible with lots of systems, but it still has to be thought out and planned out properly. Um, the processes that we're talking about, uh, people talk about IT change, oh, we're going to change the kit, but often it's about the processes around it. And when someone says, oh, this bit of our system isn't working properly, we need a new upgrade. Often it's not the system that's not working, it's the way we're using it. People haven't been trained to use it properly uh, or they're adding lots of layers and processes. They're managing their data with a whole bundle of spreadsheets around the system um, and a whole bundle of literally manual and paper processes. Um, and in the last six months, there's been an awful lot of businesses that have really struggled to get from that paper-based system that they kept saying, oh no, it's all online, to actually something that was truly online. Um, and the, the IT kit was there to do it, but the people's processes wasn't there uh, and the will to actually do it. Um, and then to think about what the end goal is. What's our overall aim? Are, are we upgrading a system because it's old and it's out of date and no one's gonna support it? Uh, are we looking to make efficiency changes and ultimately, spend a bit less on our IT, maybe spend less on the people that we're using to manage it, uh, maybe do more. We're changing the way the business works and we need to go into new areas um, and we need to build those up and we need to track them in different ways. 
Um, again, often what I see on a scope at the beginning of a project is we need to upgrade the system because it's old. Uh, but does it do what you need it to do? Um, can it work better? Uh, we need to train the people up to use things in a different way. And you've got a very different project if what you're doing is training 20, 30, 200 people across the business to do something better and more efficiently than if you're actually changing pieces of kit. So to me, I think that's where um, the project needs to start is with that detailed scope. Um, that usually involves lots of people talking to each other, which in many businesses that are quite departmentalized or sometimes called siloed, that's a big culture change to start with. Um, having sat in workshops with 20 people across 10 different departments, and at the end of the day, someone said, that is the first time we've all sat in a room together to talk about how we do things. And that business was well, actually, in truth, the organization was hundreds of years old, but people have been there for 20 or 30 years. And they'd not sat and talked together about how we can do things better. Um, I wouldn't put 20 people on an online call to do a workshop. I'd do it in smaller groups, but you can certainly do a lot of that workshopping online. There are lots of tools that you can use uh, for whiteboarding and discussions and chats. Um, so whatever the business, whatever the size, start by thinking about where you want to get to. And if you're not clear on that, um, don't buy anything. Now, my little uh, thought for today. So that's me. Uh, if we haven't yet connected on LinkedIn, um, please do. Um, and that's LinkedIn and my phone number. Easiest way to find me. But, uh, any questions? Lovely. Should we? Uh, I'll leave that screen up uh, for the moment. Let's stop on recording. Otherwise, okay. Stop.